Hi, I am Carlos Robles, a Principal Product Manager on the SQL Developer Experiences team. In this video, I will walk you through the version 1.32 of the MS SQL extension for VS Code. This release marks the general availability of our new UI. It also introduced the Schema Designer feature for visual schema editing and brings GitHub Copilot integration for AI-assisted SQL development experience, all inside VS Code. In this scenario, I'm a developer working on a full-stack application that uses Node.js, SQLite, and a SQL Server database. I have been asked to add a new feature that will allow our users to manage our magazines in our system, and also was asked to move the database to use SQL Database in Fabric as our backend platform. In this scenario, I'm also comfortable with ORMs, but still new to SQLite. And because I have a, a basic familiarity with DSQL, I want to take advantage of that. And for that, I want to use GitHub Copilot to assist me to evolve my schema quickly and efficiently all inside VS Code. All right, so let's switch over to VS Code now. Before I get started with my project, I need to complete a couple of prerequisites here in VS Code. The first one is to install the GitHub Copilot and the GitHub Copilot chat extensions. Remember, I want to take advantage of these. And the other is to install the ML SQL extension for VS Code because I want to interact with my SQL database in Fabric, so I need to connect and do a couple of things. All right. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, I'm a developer who was asked to create this SQL database in Fabric, and as a developer, I want to take advantage of infrastructure as code, and for that reason, I choose to use Terraform to help me creating the database I was asked to uh, create. So. Um, I'm not going to show you the process to create a database, I just want to show you this, that using the Terraform output command I can get information about the database I just created, as the SQL, uh, SQL database ID and the SQL database name. Um, that's helpful when you're working with databases and you need to construct a connection string, right? Uh, but there is another way. I can come here to the Fabric portal and I can select my database in my workspace, then I select settings, and from settings, I can copy the connection strings. The one that is very similar to the project I'm working on is JDBC, because I'm using Node.js and I'm using some special libraries. That's good, but I will have to make a lot of manual changes here. So the other thing I can do to take advantage of uh, Fabric's REST FBI is to get information about my database. So the first one here is the fully qualified domain name for my database. So I can just simply re replace this value here in my environment variable. And the next one is the database. So let's change the database name here and that's it. I'm all set. So if you recall at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that in this scenario, I'm dealing with a Node.js application using SQLize. So after talking to my team, they told me, yeah, we're using models for that. So uh, whenever you start the backend, it's going to create a database schema for you. You have to also run a couple of migrations just to see some uh, test data. So I already started my backend here. And you can tell here from this line, it says that all the models were synchronized successfully. And because this is a code first application, I need to seed my database. So what I'm going to do here is just to populate my tables from my development environment without using T-SQL. Remember, I'm not very familiar uh, with SQLite, but I'm learning. So, okay, all good. So it looks like I have the data. So now what I can do is simply check the application from here uh, using the simple browser from uh, VS Code and make sure I get some data. So let's, it's refreshing right now. And this is running from my local environment. It's connecting to Fabric, but yeah, everything is looking good here. So with a few clicks, I was able to get my application up and running using uh, my backend, my existing backend application and using SQL database in Fabric. All looks good, but I need to move forward, right? So now I need to connect to my SQL database in Fabric and what best option for that than the ML SQL extension in VS Code. There are a couple ways I can connect to my database. One is directly from the Fabric portal. So remember, I have the uh, connection string here, but I want to show you something else. If you click on the database and here from the uh, Fabric editor, there is another button that says open in Visual Studio Code. Obviously, you have to have Visual Studio Code installed to do what I'm about to do, the extension, but with that, I get here. So I get redirected to my environment, and from here, it's simply for me to say Fabric Dev, I select my enter ID and my tenant, 
And after clicking connect here, I should be able to start interacting with the database in Fabric. And yep, with that, I'm in. So just to do a recap, I was asked to add a new feature for magazine management in our existing application. I have my database now in SQL database in Fabric. I have the MSQL extension for VS Code. So I can start taking advantage of different uh, features here. For example, schema designer. This will help me to understand existing schema layout or the structures for this application. I also mentioned at the beginning of this video that I am a code first developer who is very familiar with ORMs, but not so much with SQLize. At the same time, I have some basic knowledge on T-SQL, so I'm okay to start exploring the database by writing queries and whatnot, but I can take advantage of the integration between GitHub Copilot and the MSQL extension to explore the schema because Copilot is now a schema aware. So this starts by just simply doing a right click on the database and then I select chat with this database. You would see that a new connection is made to my database here and the chat participant is asking me, hey, how can I assist you today? So I'll start with a very basic question. I'll ask the chat participant to assist me listing all the different tables in my database. So as you can see right off the bat, the list of tables that I got match what I have on the Object Explorer. So I can start like digging and asking more advanced questions like, okay, I want to understand the different columns and data types on the author's table, but uh, I can also explore more. You see this table right here that grabbed my attention when I was looking at the different objects and I don't know what is going on there? So I see that it says books, authors, remember, are more an ORM developer rather than T-SQL. I understand T-SQL, but I need to understand what is happening there. And so what I got after asking this question to the chat participant is very interesting. It is giving me the information I need about this schema. It's telling me this is a junk table and which represents a many-to-many -many relationship. Oh, so I understand that. And that's happening between the books and author's table. And guess what? It's also telling me what's the purpose, what the structure, and it's also giving me examples. So that's very interesting. So now I can start like working on the task in hand. Remember, I need to add this new magazines model to my database or table, right? So I have this JSON structure that is an idea of how the magazines table should look like. And now I am asking Copilot to assist me with that. So I also make sure to mention that I want this table to be created using SQL Server best practices. And I got my code. And by simply selecting this button right here, I can um, copy this code to, directly to my code editor. So now I need to move to something else. Remember, we have this John Chunk table for books and authors. So I probably need something like that for magazines so I can ask Copilot to assist me with that. I'm not super familiar how that works. So uh, let's see if Copilot can assist me. And right here, I'm asking, I want to add this many to many relationship between the magazines table and existing authors table. Help me doing that. So with that, I get this new table, which is called magazine authors. So what is interesting here is that Copilot now is aware of my schema, right? So you can see that it's listing the different two IDs for the magazines and authors table. And if I want to do a correlation of that by opening here the OE, I can see that DVO dot authors has the primary column called ID. So this is correct. So now remember when I was testing this app, I had some seed data. I need the same here. So I can move on with this prompt. I'm going to ask Copilot to assist me creating some insert statements for the magazines table. I want these uh, magazines to be themed around astronomy, science, robotics. I also need to make sure I have the link between magazines and authors, so I'm asking to assist me with the insert for the next table. And here's the code for the seed data. So let's move this to the editor. Let's do the same here for um, magazines authors table. And now I have everything I need. So I can simply execute this script and wait for this process to complete and create the tables for me, create the mock-up data, and I can just simply validate that 
by using the extension here and refreshing the list of objects and then let's query the magazines table and as you can see the data that I asked for is here the table is here so this is fantastic after doing some basic testing with my application I noticed that there was a small performance problem and by looking at the schema and everything else I found there is a store procedure here Again, I'm familiar with T-SQL at some degree, but this is probably too much for me, right? Um, but I can ask Copilot to assist me here. So I just found the store procedure and I want to understand what the store procedure does. And I want Copilot to assist me here, explaining this in a way that I can understand. So it says, okay, it's selecting some columns from a book table, it's getting some author's names, but it's concatenating everything. That sounds a little bit suspicious. So what if I ask Copilot to assist me with a little bit more? I want Copilot to analyze the store procedure, identify some potential performance bottlenecks, and also provide me recommendations how I can fix this. And with that, Yes, so I get uh, some information about what is not helping with the performance here, lack of indexing, uh, looks like it's trying to do some string aggregation on large data, and here are the recommendations. They always want to add index to pre-aggregate the data. This is one that I really uh, am interested in, that the existing store procedure is doing a select star from one of the tables, so this is probably the reason why um, this is not working fine. On top of that, the lack of indexes and more. So yeah, this is how developers that are not very familiar with T-SQL can get responses about how to improve the performance of their database schema and the code in oral uh, just with a, a couple of questions here using Copilot. Until now, I have been very productive thanks to GitHub Pilot to make changes directly to my schema using T-SQL. But let's remember, this project is using SQLite, so I have to turn that database schema code into SQLite models. And I just learned that SQLite is not capable to do reverse engineering from my existing code. So guess what can I use for that? So probably you have the answer, right? So GitHub Copilot. Once again, I can ask GitHub Copilot because it has access to my database schema to interpret what I did and turn that into SQLite models. And taking advantage of the context here, I can provide an example to, to create a model in the same way as my existing models. Of course, I'm providing a lot of information here saying, I need you to create a magazines models. I need you to create this junction table, ensure to follow the same patterns, best practices. So let's ask Copilot to assist us with this task. So as you can see here, I got my magazines model. And if we do a cross comparison here between the magazines table in my database, and the schema that was provided or generated by GitHub Copilot, everything, it's a match. The data types, the outer increment here. Then let's look at our junction table and everything is correct here. Magazines, authors, and then I got the associations and here's how I can create the Cedar file. Remember, I created this uh, mockup data using T-SQL, using those inserts. So I need to turn that into SQLized models. And with the magic of video editing, we can fast forward my scenario. But as you can see here from source control, I added the different models, the routes, and made the changes and actually restarted my app to make sure I can try this new endpoint that uh, was created for magazines. As you can see, I get my data back. So it's just a matter of minutes, I was able to add a new feature to my database by using GitHub Copilot without having much information about the project, the database schema, and even not much experience using SQLite. GitHub Copilot assisting me by translating all the changes from T-SQL to SQLite so I can move forward and add this new feature to my application. And that's it for this demo. So to recap, we learned how to use the MSQL extension to connect to SQL database in Fabric. We take advantage of a GitHub Copilot integration with the MSQL extension to evolve my schema and even generate application code. If we want to learn more about the MSQL extension from VS Code, make sure to check out the links in the video description below. And for now, that's all. Thank you for watching and happy coding.